<laughs> well, you should have let me go. Could have saved yourself some trouble. You don't know it yet, but you're working for me. I just heard about Barney Hennessy. How'd it happen? Oh, he's bringing in a prisoner. A couple of men laying for him. Who did it? We don't know yet. Smitty? How's Barney's wife taking it? She's holding up. It's gonna be tough for her and the kid. Smitty, I'd like to... Now, Laura, you don't have to do Give that. Give it to her. But don't say nothing about me. She might get the wrong idea. Thanks, Laura. Yeah? What'd you find? Stayed at the Denver house the night before last. No names on the register. How about the horses? Stole them from a ranch up on Cherry Creek. Found the saddlebags. Not much here. Get anything out of him? He keeps saying he doesn't know anything about him. Let's see what I've got in my book. Here. Let's see what he has to say about this. Go through this, Cal. So, you've got no idea who those two men were? I told you, it could have been a couple of friends of mine. I got lots of friends. But they were with you when you took that bank at Cheyenne last month. Those two and five others. So what gives you that idea? This. <laughs> well, Alfie, so you've been keeping a history on me. That's right, Garrity. Keep a history on every lawbreaker. Never know when it'll come in handy. Like now. Well, we'll see how this stuff's gonna do you any good. I'll tell you how. It says there were eight men in that express office hold up in there. And eight men took that UP payroll last fall in Ogallala. Now, we've got those two in the morgue. We've got you here. At least five, doesn't it? Sure is good at arithmetic, ain't he? Who are they, Garrity? Answer him. Why? I'll take care of this, Smitty. Smitty? Is this the great whispering cement? Yeah. You're gonna get to know him a lot better before you're through. <laughs> whispering Smith? Him? <laughs> well, son, you ain't took to shaving, have you? Tried it a couple of times. <laughs> right. I want to know about those two men. I want to know who they were and how they knew you were around in Tennessee. There are some other things I want to know, too. How much you get, George? George. I'm counting. I'm Laura. 
How's Richards doing with Gary? Not too good. You talked to him last night, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I talked to him. You tell him he's gonna hang? Yeah, I did. What do you think about that? He ain't worried. I wonder why. Say, you got no idea why. No, I got no ideas why. Something wrong with you? No. Something's chewing on you, you can see. Smitty, me. there's nothing eating on you. All right. Three hundred and fourteen dollars and thirty-eight cents. Barney's laid out in this coffin and we squared with three hundred and fourteen dollars and thirty-eight cents. And it'll be two years tomorrow. How's that? That's how long they've been married. Just two months to the day longer, Needy and me. George, what does Edie think about all this? I told her not to think. She marries me. This is the kind of deal she gets. Yeah. George Romack, I'm tired of this. Whatever it is, you better get it off your chest. Nah. Come home. Slam the door. Eat dinner without even saying hello. Edie, I told you I've had a hard day. I had a hard day, too. How do you think I felt spending all day with Nora Hennessy? Telling myself there before the grace of God. Edie, will you shut up? It's true, isn't it? It could have been you just as easy as Barney. I come home needing you like everything. And the first thing you've got to say is pack up and go see your mother in Cincinnati. To tell me that now when... When what? When I need you right now more than ever. Edie, you can stay here for the rest of your life if you want. I told you it was just a suggestion. Edie. I love you so much it hurts. I'll get it. Good evening, George. Well, it was kind of like this, as near as I can remember. Of course, I, I didn't make a study of the guy, you understand. How long before the shooting did he come into the saloon? Well, it was about five minutes. You drink alone? Yeah, at first. Then he moved down the bar to these two fellas. They talked for a couple of minutes. Scarface must have tipped them off. Hennessy was riding in. Have you seen Scarface since the shooting? No, not a sign of him. Of course, like I told George this morning, there was so much excitement after the shooting and everything. Wait a minute. Huh? George? George Romack. He stopped in the saloon this morning. I told him about Scarface. Didn't he tell you, fellas? These guys keeping secrets? Yeah, he, he stopped in to collect for Mrs. Hennessy. Sure. Oh, that reminds me. You fellas will be going to the wake. Would you give her these? Expect she can use them. Yeah. Well, night. Night, Gordon. Before he went home, I asked him if he had anything to report. Probably slipped his mind, see? Why are you trying to defend him? Defend him? What's he done? I don't know. I wish I did. I wish I knew what he did for a living before he ended up in my department on your say-so. Nothing wrong with George Romack. Got a wife? Baby coming? Just thinking how I could be his wake tonight instead of Barney's. If he lets that stand in his way, he's got no business on the force. Jeez. How many kids have you got? I don't know, Smitty. I don't know what they talked about. George sent me out of the room. What happened after the fellow left? George sat in here by himself for a long time. Didn't want to talk. Sometimes he gets that way, and I've learned just to let him be. Then, well, after a spell, he came into the kitchen. Said he thought he'd go over to Hennessy's wake. How long ago was that? A couple of hours. I'm worried about him, Smitty. I am, too. He never showed up at Hennessy's. How long has he been this way? Oh, an hour. 
But it wasn't my fault, Mr. Smith. He went behind the bar and got the bottle himself. George. Go away, Hoyle. Come on, let's go. I don't know anyhow. I uh, What do you want to do this for, Smitty? Smitty. Come on, Smitty, leave me. I need some coffee, Corky. That's enough. <laughs> I should have told you this when he got me the job. His name's Duggan. I rode with him and Garrity once down in Texas. That was five years ago. How'd you know? I know. I knew before you were hired. And you didn't tell Richards? Why? I had a feeling about you. Hunch, maybe. I figured you decided to leave Texas behind you. Was I right? Then let's forget it. What did Duggan have in mind? Well, I'm in charge tomorrow night, and they want me to turn Garrity loose. Offered me $1,500 in gold. What'd you tell him? I told him if he ever showed his face around there again, I'd break him in half. <laughs> but I was bluffing, and he knew it. Bluffing? Well, I'm afraid for Edie. I, I tried to get her out of town, but she won't hear of it. I don't know. If it was only me, I'd spit in her eye, but... But, Smitty, you know she's expecting. And if anything happened to her, anything happened to Edie, I don't know. Well, what's the answer? Drink yourself to death? No. I'll quit the department. A month the force, they got no use for me, right? They'll leave us alone. Mr. Smith, he just come in. The guy with the scar. I'm gonna tell that... Hold it. Sit down. Go in there and hold him at the bar as long as you can. All right. What are you going to do? Never mind. Get going. I wonder what would happen if we played along with him. Is you loco or something? Maybe. But suppose you turn Garrity loose. I wonder where he'd go. Why, he'd ride back to his boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of uh, excitement, uh, social life, too. Uh, for instance, we have a, a very, very nice wait going on uh, tonight, if you're interested in that sort of a thing. I don't remember inviting you to drink with me. You thought it over? Yeah, and I can't do it. I'm working for John Richards. I don't like him much, but he pays me $80 a month, so I do what he says. Thought I'd find you here. Go away, Smitty. Get up. I said go away. You know what Richard said the last time you got drunk on duty? I'm not drunk! You keep out of this. You go out back and soak your head under that pump and report to your office in 10 minutes. You got that? Uh, get out of here. You get yourself fired, you're no good to us, George. I like to take care of now. Baby coming too, I hear. I think you could use some money. How about it? You'll never get nowheres at $80 a month. <laughs> All right. Tell your friends I changed my mind. Tomorrow night? Yeah. before. You'd have fired him. You know what you're putting in Romack's hands? Your reputation, my reputation, the whole department's. I told you I'd trust him. How do you know you can? Got a feeling. Feeling? 
You and your feelings. Hi. Five hundred dollars. Get the rest when I deliver them to Duggan. What time is that? Between midnight and one o'clock. Duggan's gonna have a couple of horses at the Cherry Creek Bridge. Where are they taking him? Won't say. Wherever it is, though, they're gonna make it about sunup. He did say that. Garrity's bad leg. You'll have to walk his horse. And can trail him on foot. Duggan doesn't suspect anything. No, only that you might fire me before I can do him any good. No, you're not gonna get fired, George. But if this thing doesn't work out, I'm gonna be the first police chief in history to get lynched, and you two are gonna be right alongside me. Well, I'll see you in about an hour. Where are you going now? I'm to Cassidy, goodbye. Finally talked her into visiting your mom. Edie. Edie, hon, where are you? Edie? Edie? Where are you, hon? She's gone, George. Where is she? Oh, now, don't worry. We'll take good care of her. Garrity ain't much of a one for taking chances. We just want to be sure whose side you're playing on. What'd I get done with? Hold it. That's far enough. You won't pull that trigger. I'm no good to you dead, Duggan. Probably headed south. Otherwise, there'd be no sense in meeting at the Cherry Creek Bridge. You're south of our area. Dry Creek Dickens. No. Four hours at a walk could take you past there. Down around Plum Creek. I'd say somewhere along there. They got Edie. Where? Tell him, Duggan. I said tell him, Duggan. Plum. Plum Creek Church. There'll be four of them footed up down there. We'll need more men. No. We ride in there with an army, they'll kill her. George and I take Duggan here in Garrity. We might be able to make a deal with them. started jabbering like Polly Parrots when they were scared. Or maybe you just ain't scared. Hey, Chief. Four riders moving up outside. Well, that's just two too many. You expecting company, honey? <laughs> You know what to tell them. Mrs. Romack delivered to us safe. We'll turn Garrity loose. Suppose you don't. I wouldn't suppose if I was you, Dougie. Another thing, if she's hurt in any way, you're gonna lose the rest of that skin. That goes for anyone else that lays a hand on her. You tell them that. Smith and Romack and who else? Nobody. You mean they came here alone? Look, I told you. There's only the two of them and Garrity. Send them the woman and they turn him loose. How do we know? You don't. You take their word for it. Not me. Fallon. Go up in the belfry and holler over to him. Tell him we bring the girl, they fetch Garrity. We'll meet him halfway. Sure worked you over, didn't he? Shut up. Smitty! 
is he dead? Might as well be for all the good he's gonna do us now. Smith! Romack! We'll meet you halfway. You bring Gary, we bring the woman. You hear? Don't come without him. You hear that? If we show up without him, they'll kill Edie. Come on, give me a hand. Any sign of them? Nothing yet. What's keeping them? Here they come. All right, lady. Let's go. George, I want to have a look around. Okay. We dropped Edie off at her home, and George and I took the prisoners in. I knew there'd never be any question about George's past again. He'd more than lived it down. He proved it by living up to his job on the force. It sure pays to have a little faith in a man, especially when that man is your friend.